Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week one of our new series, which is called Set Apart. This is about sanctification. How do we live more like Christ than living as ourselves? So for us to start this, we must start with the first step of sanctification, which is justification. Sanctification is how we become more like Christ. Justification is what starts the process because we become justified before Christ. So in the presence of God, we are no longer seen as enemies, but as family. So let's start with our first verse, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So we've been justified by faith. Not by works, not by actions, not by who our family is, who we belong to, but by the faith we placed in God. That faith itself is a gift from God. In other words, God has done everything, all of the work, to allow us to be saved, to be justified before Him. Now, we can look and say, you know, God, why didn't you give us a million ways to Christ? Or what million ways to you other than through Christ? But He gave us one. And the scripture makes it clear. Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. And that was done through the cross. Not because we figured it out or we're just so smart or we're just so great. It's by grace. And he didn't have to give us away. He could have said, look, humans, I created this world. You chose to disobey. You figure it out. You figure out what the right punishment is for sin. You figure out the right way to be restored. Or I could have said, you know what? I don't want you to be restored. I'll just let you go and do your own thing. Be apart from me forever. But instead, he's given us the hope that we can be children of God through the cross. To illustrate this, let's look at Romans 3, 21 through 26. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ is for all who believe. There is no distinction. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as the propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. And this was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So it says righteousness is manifest apart from the law. That means keeping the law does not save anyone. It never made anyone righteous. That wasn't the point of the law. The point of the law was to give us the extent of sin. To use a more current example, it's like a speed limit, right? 40 miles per hour is the maximum I can go in a zone. If I exceed 40 miles per hour, I get a ticket. So in other words, the speed limit is not telling me the speed to go. It's telling me what I can't do. So I can go 35, 36, 37. I can go 40. But on the minute I go 41, I am now in error. That's what the law was designed to do. It gives us the parameters of sin. That doesn't mean I am righteous before God. It just lets me know what my transgressions are before God. So we are justified as a gift through the redemption of Christ Jesus. It says he's the propitiation. That means he is the sacrifice that is done over and over and over and over and over again for every sin committed. Jesus is sufficient for all sins past, current, and future. The perfect Lamb of God. And it's because of God's divine forbearance. It's because he wanted to forgive us. If he did not want to, he was not obligated to. We don't deserve God's grace. We deserve to be separated from him eternally because of our sin. Because all have fallen short. Nobody is going to go to heaven just because they were just that good. We've all done something that transgresses an immortal God. But he has given us a way to be justified, to be seen as family, not as an enemy, 
That's when we put our faith in Jesus. What does it mean to put your faith in Jesus? The scripture says that means we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. So when I put my faith in Jesus, I believe he is Lord. Now that Lord there is like, he is God. He is the ruler. He is over my will. He is everything. And that God raised him from the dead, we would be saved. I must believe in the resurrection. That Jesus was a real man who really lived, who really died, and really came back. So that I too may share in that resurrection. That he took my place on the cross. For the wages of sin is death. The scripture illustrates this part like this. 1 Peter 2, 24-25. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He bore all of our sin on his body, on his person. So Jesus knows what it's like to be an adulterer, a murderer, a liar, not because he committed the sin himself, but he took on our sin. When I lied, it fell on Jesus. If I committed murder, it fell on Jesus. If I had committed adultery, it fell on Jesus, even though he was perfect. And it's by his wounds, for every stripe, every piercing, we have been healed. We are healed of our sin. The wounds that we are promised to heal is that what has been transgressed against us. That means even the deepest of scars can be healed through Christ. The most pain you may have ever felt in your life can be made whole in Christ. Because it's when we are justified before Him, when I say we've made peace with God, we can live as we're truly supposed to be. We're still going to live under the bondage of sin, even if we're freed from it, if I haven't accepted my place before the Lord. What I'm saying is you can be saved, you can be justified, but still live as if you're yoked to sin. And a lot of us think we're not good enough, we're not worthy, we're, we don't do enough for God, uh, we don't know enough, we don't know about scripture, we don't spend enough time with him, and all those things may be true. But what the enemy does is use that as a weapon to say that God can't use you. When the truth of the matter is, all of that could be factual. Probably don't spend enough time with God. Probably could do more. I could do better. But He loves me anyway. And I have found maximum love even before I was God's. It says, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. God loved me maximally even when I was a sinner. Because He died for my sin. So that I may be set free. So you and I will struggle until we've made peace with God. 2 Corinthians 5, 16-21 says, From now on, therefore we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. And we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. So we regard no one according to the flesh any longer. When we see our brother and sister in Christ, we don't see them as they were, we see them as God has remained them. When we see a lost person, we shouldn't just see them as the sinner separated from God. Is that true? Yes. But we shouldn't regard them according to the flesh. They are made in the image of God. This person is someone for whom Christ has died. So we can regard them even then spiritually, when even when they're not walking with God. And it doesn't matter where I've been, 
We live in a world today that is very confused about what biology, and genetic, and all that is, and whose fault. And look, I, I'll give a concession. I've seen a lot of studies on even alcoholism. That if you have multiple generations of alcoholics, you can be born with a propensity towards alcoholism. And that's not your fault. You were born that way. Just because I was born with that propensity does not mean I'm allowed to take part in getting drunk. Just because I was born with a propensity to kill people doesn't mean I should do that. We are not called to live in our base instincts. We are called to live a higher. We are called to live as God has called us to. So even if it's natural to me, God says, let me make you a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Let me lift you out of the standard of your base instinct standard of the kingdom of God so that you can be free sin is not freedom the Bible describes it as bondage but it says he's reconciled us well, to give an easy example let's just say I go and I, and I murder someone and I go to court and I go to my hearing I'm about to get my sentence and I say judge wait hold on a minute let me tell you a couple things before you give me my sentence I helped an old lady cross the street once. I was really, really nice to the to my waiter. Right? I I didn't abuse my kids. I became a Christian. So you should let me off. The judge is gonna say, no, it's not the way this works. You committed a crime. Someone must pay the debt. And in the case of this, Jesus says, I'll pay it. It says the wages of sin is death. We couldn't afford the price to absolve ourselves of sin. So Jesus paid it for us. And because of that truth, it says that we become his ambassadors <clears throat> to tell the rest of the world how they too can be made right before God. You won't feel free or find freedom until you've made peace with your Creator. I think we were designed that way. You may be a Christian. You may be redeemed. You may be justified. But you have to find a way to live in that truth. And if you haven't, I pray that today we be the day of salvation. So that you will live in the reality that He became sin and we became the righteousness of God. So that's where sanctification starts. With justification for our almighty God, our creator. I want to thank you for joining us this week. If you have any questions, you can reach out at newday416.church or and go to staff newday416.church if you want to email us with any thoughts or concerns. I want to thank you for joining us this evening and may God richly bless you. We'll see you on Sunday.